Ras McCohen Wolda Michael Wolda Melicott or simply Ras McCohen, also known as Abba Kagnu, was an Ethiopian royal from Shua, a military leader, the governor of Harar, and the father of future emperor Haile Selassie. Described by Nikolai Gumilev as one of the greatest leaders of Abyssinia, he served in the First Italo-Ethiopian War, playing a key role at the Battle of Adwa. Ras Makoen was commonly referred to as the Napoleon of Africa. Ras Makoen Wolde Michael Wolde Melikot was born at Darifo Meriam near Ankober, in what was then in the province of Menz to his mother Wazero Tenegnwerk Sala Selassie and his father De Jasmik Wolde Michael Wolde Melikot, who was the governor of the provinces Menz and Doba, which are located in Semian Shua. Ras Makoen Wolde Michael was the father of Emperor Haile Selassie, and first cousin and close confidant of Emperor Menelik II. He was the grandson of King Sala Selassie of Shua through his mother Tenegnwerk Sala Selassie. At the age of 14 his father took him and raised at the court of his first cousin Menelik who was then King of Shua, Makoen was the relative who was probably closest to the future relative and was regarded by Menelik as something of a younger brother. He served in Menelik's military campaigns to restore the lost southern regions to the Ethiopian crown. In 1887, Makoen was given the governorship of Harar after it was incorporated into the Ethiopian Empire by his cousin, Emperor Menelik following the Battle of Kalenko. According to Jules Borelli, Harar was pillaged by Abyssinian soldiers with half its population fleeing, despite pleas from the despoiled locals to Makoen. The Harari people soon revolted which followed Makoen storming the town with his troops raising and plundering residences. According to Hararis, the oppression of Harari people began with the invasion of Harar by Ras Makoen which followed mosques changed into churches and Abyssinian Christians arriving from the north to settle in the town. Makoen had ordered the primary mosque of Harar to be replaced by an Orthodox church. In the 1880s, as Shum of Harar, Ras Makoen became a close friend of the French poet, Arthur Rambeau, who was then living and doing business in that province. His Amhara, Tigray, and Aramo ethnicity helped him become a shuttle diplomat. Bringing peace to regions that did not comply with Emperor Menelik's central government, due to his Tigray identity he was able to march to the region of Tigray and accord peace with Ras Mangesha, the son of Emperor Johannes, who had rebelled against Emperor Menelik. His Aramo ethnicity coupled with his father-in-law's Muslim and Aramo heritage helped him win the favor of locals to eventually become the first governor of Harar. With 82 mosques and 102 shrines, Harar is the fourth holiest city of the Islamic world. The Ras transformed Harar into a unique hub for people of multi-religious and multi-ethnic backgrounds to live in peace and harmony. Even though he did not live to see it, every groundbreaking vision the Ras initiated in Harar was a success story. Education was a quintessential element to Ras Makonen. In 1900, he sent a young Tekel Hawariot to Russia who later became the author of the first written Ethiopian constitution. At home the Ras established the first school in his palace compound. His son, Lij Tafari, the emperor of Ethiopia, Lij Imru, the most beloved Ras, Lij Bishard, the first mayor of Derrida, Zudi Belain, the first ministry of labor, and Dr. Malaku, the first degree holder from the U.S and founder of EWF, were the products of the Harar school, when Lij Tafari, Lij Imru, and Lij Bishard moved to Addis Ababa to join the Emperor Menelik school. The school's professor had to create a special class because their knowledge was more advanced than the rest of the local students, such as Lij Ayasu, the grandson of Emperor Menelik, the leader of Ethiopia from 1913 to 16, the first high official of Emperor Menelik in Europe was Ras Makoen. The Ras went to Italy to sign the Treaty of Wuchel in 1892. After he signed the treaty, 
he learned that this treaty had two different versions. Afwerk Jebriesis, was a student in Rome, helped him to understand the Italian version, which stated that Ethiopia was a colony of Italy. Upon arrival in Addis Ababa, the Ras informed Emperor Menelik that his signature at Wuchel in Ethiopia was also approved the power of Italy over Ethiopia. To strengthen Harar's linkages with the Red Sea and Indian Ocean trade routes, Ras Makonnen appointed Sheikh Muhammad Ali, an Indian businessman as a bijirand, treasurer, of the Harar. The Sheikh was in charge of merchant vessels that were deployed on the Red Sea and Indian Ocean. Sheikh Muhammad helped the Ras army with advanced weapons. It was not by accident that the Ras army was armed to the teeth at the Battle of Adwa. The Ras foresaw an inevitable war looming ahead and used Zila, the Somali port, to secure sufficient equipment and manpower. On his way to the battle, the Ras stopped in Addis Ababa to meet with Emperor Menelik. Emperor Menelik, after visiting the Ras's army, with admiration was believed to have said, doesn't the throne belong to you Makoan? The Ras replied, I am here to protect the throne not overthrow it. The predicament of Ras Makonnen before the war broke out, there was a rumor in Addis Ababa that the Italians were using Ras Makonnen to overthrow the throne of Emperor Menelik. On the other hand, the Ras had the intention of solving the Ethio-Italians crisis through diplomacy. He kept writing to the Italian generals while still marching to the battles. His diplomatic effort was taken as cowardice by the Italian generals while Empress Tedu considered it as a fulfillment of the plot against her husband, Emperor Menelik. The Ras, in the middle of this dilemma, marched 1,640 kilometers to face the enemy while Menelik and Tedu's huge armies were behind him. If he did not receive a response letter securing a peaceful solution from the Italians he would be forced to begin the war before they arrived. However, if he failed to do either, he probably would have been detained by Empress Tata's men as a traitor. With this background, the Ras had to begin his first battle against the Italian and its alien forces, Eritreans, Somalians, and Libyans. The Ras' first victory at the Battle of Ambalage had paved a way to the victory of Mikiel and Adwa, which put Ethiopia's, Emperor Menelik, and Empress Tedu's names on the international arena. In 1901, Ras Makonnen provided means and materials to build the first hospital in Harar at his own expense. Joseph Vidalin, a black diaspora, was his private doctor and later that of Emperor Menelik. Dr. Vitaline was also mentor to Lij Tafari who became the first Ethiopian emperor who claimed blacks in the diaspora as his own subjects. Other posts Ras Makoan served included temporary governor of Tigray after the removal of the rebellious Ras Mangasha Johannes, and as a general during various military campaigns during the First Italo-Ethiopian War including a leading role at the Battle of Adwa where Ethiopian forces routed the Italians, and as a diplomat and de facto foreign minister. In 1902, Ras Makoan attended the coronation of King Edward VII in London. He arrived in June to the ceremony originally scheduled for June 26, and stayed in Europe while the king recovered from an operation, attending the rescheduled ceremony on August 9. Between these dates, he paid visits to various parts of the United Kingdom, and visited Italy, France, Turkey, and Germany. He received the following decorations, Knight Commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. George during an audience with King Edward VII on August 8, 1902, Star of the Russian Order of St. Anne, Star of the French Legion d'Honneur, Third Republic, Star of the Order of the Crown of Italy, star of the Ottoman Order of Osmania. In 1903, the Ras introduced Haji Abdullahi Sadiq, a native Harari, to Emperor Menelik. The Haji was an adventurer and a master in trade throughout the Middle East. While the Haji was in Istanbul he met Robert Skinner, a U.S. ambassador during the Ottoman Empire. 
Fritz Skinner came to Ethiopia as the first U.S. envoy with the Haji's connection. Two years later Haji Sadiq became the first Ethiopian envoy to the U.S. and presented Emperor Menelik's message to President Theodore Roosevelt. In 1906, Dejazmik Yilma Makoan succeeded Makoan as Shum of Harar. Yilma Makoan was his son from before his marriage to Waziro Yashimabet Ali. In 1907, Yilma Makoan was in turn succeeded as Shum by his younger half-brother, Tafari Makoan, the future Emperor Haile Selassie. Summoned to Addis Ababa by the Emperor on business, Ras Makoan set out from Harar in March 1906 but became suddenly ill on the road and was taken to Kalibi where he died on March 21, 1906, possibly of typhus. His body was taken to Harar and buried in the church of St. Michael there as his son Dejazmach Tafari Makoan presided over the funeral. Menelik too was distraught upon hearing that his cousin had died and ordered that the Ras 40th day commemoration would be held at the Imperial Palace in Addis Ababa and that he himself would sit as chief mourner. On the day of the 40th day commemoration, the two sons of Ras Makoan entered the large mourning tent on the grounds of the palace accompanied by the late prince's retainers who carried a large painting of the Ras. Menelik too stunned the assembled crowds when contrary to the long tradition of imperial restraint in all public ceremonies, the emperor rose from his throne wailing, Makoan my son Makoan by brother, I have lost my right arm, as he wept and kissed his cousin's portrait repeatedly reducing his entire court to sobs. The following article is translated from the book of His Excellency, Harui Wolda Selassie, which depicted the prelude of the Battle of Ottawa from the bird's eye view, the Battle of Ambulage was led by Ras Makonan as a commander-in-chief. Ras Makan and Ras Mikael on the rear side, Ras Manjesha and Ras Alula on the right flank, Ras Walidi on the left, and Fetwarari Gabehu on front. Headed on horseback, each led their army towards to the Italian trench, to avoid bloodshed, Ras Makonen wrote the following message to the Italian Major Pietro Toselli, Though I am here to fight, I still don't want bloodshed so I would advise you to lead your camp and retreat. Emperor Menelik with his army is advancing swiftly. Please let us avoid this preventable war. I have also an unanswered letter which I wrote to your boss, General Orest Baratieri, I hope your help to get the answer to my letter. Major Toselli's answer was, the letter has reached to Genio Baratieri and his response would come in due course. However, if your intention is peaceful, you should have waited in your camp for the answer. Ras Makonen concluded that peaceful settlement was not attainable and decided to proceed. Federary Gebihu's army advanced throughout the night, and at daybreak it reached the Italian trench and the Italians started to shoot, when the heavy sound of gunfire exchanged between Federary Gebihu's army and the Italian. The rest of the Ethiopian army advanced quickly from all sides to join Federary Gebehu. In a few minutes, the Italian trench was encircled. From the left, as the Ras Wallis army pushed forcefully, the Italian army started retreating to the hill and began to fire the mortar from the distance. From the center, the armies of Ras Makonen and Ras Michael jumped over the trench and dashed to the hill. They mixed themselves with the Italian army and fought fiercely hand to hand with sword and shield. I will leave you with final statement of General Baratari, the commander-in-chief of the Italian army, which he wrote only a few hours before he began the Battle of Adwa, the battle spirit of my soldiers is so high but the enemy's is fearless and belittle death. The monument to Ras Makoan previously located in Harar was sculpted in 1959 by Anton Augustinsic, a Croatian sculptor active in former Yugoslavia and the United States. In June 2020 the equestrian monument to Ras Makoan was toppled and destroyed by Aramo mobs who participated in Hachalu Hundesa riots, following the death of Hachalu Hundesa. It is alleged the Harari Regional State Police officers supported its removal. 
The event was also followed by smashing of the statue of Rasmako and Wolda Michael's son and Ethiopian leader Haile Selassie in Wimbledon Park, UK. Referring to a statue in Addis Ababa of Menelik II, Hachalu told Oromia Media Network, OMN, said that people should remember that all the horses seen mounted by old rulers' leaders belonged to the people.